Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to explore how to control the driven point of a turning tool. More, we're going to learn how to do this on a B-axis mill turn machine. For this sample, I've chosen a Mazak Integrex 100SY. To begin with, and to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing, I'm going to start by going over here, right-clicking and going to the display of the machine, and I'm going to turn off what we call the ground elements. This allows me to see more of the working area of the machine and turn off the sheet metal of the machine, for example. Next, I'm going to choose what I want to machine. To keep things really simple, I'm just going to select this front face and go to roughing. What I'm about to explain to you works regardless of the feature that you're machining. You can see here that Top Solid has chosen a neutral tool because, frankly, that's the first turning tool that's available in my carousel already. To make this a little bit more interesting, instead of just using a neutral tool, what I'm going to do is switch to this tool. This tool is a bit interesting because it's not quite fully a neutral tool and it's not quite fully a left-hand tool. In this case, you can see that the forward angle of the insert is past the vertical of the part. So here, I couldn't use this tool to turn the face of this part, or could I? Interesting fun fact, Top Solid always looks at the leading angle and the back angle of every insert that you're using while turning, and will show you what you can actually do based on your tool's specific information. I mean, how cool is that? Now, what I want to do here is I want to use this tool to face off this part, but to do that, I have to rotate the tool. Cool. Easy. Let's start by doing that. To begin with, I'm going to go over here to comments. It's in the comments section that I can set my B-axis angle. For example, I can go here and say I would like the B-axis to be at 75 degrees. Now, if I zoom up on that, now you can see the forward angle here is to the right side of that vertical face that we're trying to machine, which now means that I can machine. Perfect. Just another fun fact about this dialog, maybe you want to flip this over. It's super simple with Top Solid. Now that I have my B-axis angle set, now let's zoom up and take a look at what's happening. Now you can see that tool is going all the way down. But now we have a tricky thing to deal with. We have to tell our machine what point of this insert we're driving by. And here's what I mean. I'm going to zoom up on this a little bit, and I'm going to draw on the screen. Right now, let's think of it this way. We need to be able to touch this tool off in X, and I'm just going to use this arrow to represent my x-axis zero. And we also have to touch off this tool in Z, right? So to do that, on your machine, you're going to bring this touch off on Z, you're going to bring this touch off on X. The problem is, right now, if I zoom way up, you see how my cursor is holding on to that driven point? It's like the tool wasn't rotated. Well, why is that? Let's go to our cutting conditions, and let's go to gauges and find out. Here we're using a command called tip auto by default. Tip auto works perfectly if that tool stays oriented exactly vertically or exactly horizontally. Then we're going to find the right driven point of that tool. What we're going to do is we're going to help Top Solid. We're going to right click on this and say duplicate. I'm going to screw around with a copy of the driven point. Once I do that, down here you can see you have the driven point control of the tool. For example, I could go to nose radius center and now if you look, my cursor is holding on to the radius center point, which is cool. But if I output it this way, and this would work just fine, when you pick this tool up at the machine, you're going to have to compensate in X and in Z for driving by tool nose radius center. What if there was an easier way? Well, there is an easier way, and there's an easier way because you're using top solid. If I zoom back out and then come in down here towards the bottom, I see a visual representation of my driven points. Again, I can click on them out here and change to whichever point I want. Now, this is showing the problem. Right now, that point that we originally described as the theoretical is rotated to 75 degrees. What if we could tell the software to pretend it's not? And that's what make gauge and position is all about. If I select this here, you'll notice it rotated the driven points back, and now I'm driving by that theoretical position again. And just to be super clear here, again, I'm going to draw on the screen. I'm driving again by touching off in X and in touching off in Z, and where that point winds up is that theoretical point. Perfect. What's even cooler about that is it was a simple 
function to activate to get the good driven point even on a complex machine like a B-axis mill turn by Integrex. Now all I have to do is hit my green check mark. Top Solid, of course, will do the rest. It will create the tool path. It will update the stock model and will even wind up doing a little simulation on the back end. Here you can see the tools rotating. If you want, let's go ahead and turn on the full machine. We're rotating that 75 degrees. We're going to make our approach move. We're approaching in Z. Now we're approaching in X. Now we're doing our cut. And now we're going to retract out and send that tool home.